So welcome to this review of the Power Oak AC50S. Uh, it's a Power Oak in the UK and uh, it's known as a Bluetti uh, in other places. It's just that they haven't registered the Bluetti name in the UK. So I'm going to call it a Power Oak uh, AC, AC50. I've been sent this product for free. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to give an honest review of what I think of this product. I'm not being paid to say anything nice, but this does classify as one of those paid promotions. But hopefully you'll find this interesting. Um, I found this particular unit particularly interesting and I'll explain why a little bit later. But first let's have a look at the unboxing. Instructions, solar power leads, a USB to USB-C cable, always oh, handy, and a 12 volt charger lead, that is the mains charger, with the mains lead of course, and here it is. So the price of this unit is around about £500, give or take £1 or so. I found it on Amazon. Uh, there will be links in the description below, so check those out. The weight of this unit is 6.2 kilograms, which means you can lift it one-handed. It's, uh, it's reasonably portable. It has a 150 watt hour battery, a 300 watt mains supply at the front. It's 300 watts shared between two main sockets here and that means 150 on that and 150 on that or 300 on one socket. On the top it has a wireless charger so you can charge your phone simply by plonking it on the top. It's a 10 watt wireless charger. It has a 45 watt USB-C PD socket, which means that I can use that to charge my laptop. So I'm actually charging my laptop at the moment using this unit. And if I check to see what it's taken, it's taken about 42 watts uh, from, from the power unit and it's powering my laptop. It has four USB A's, those are traditional type USBs that you see. It has two DC out sockets, these ones here, and they are used, I'm told, to power uh, lights, LED lights, string of lights, or something like that. It has one cigarette type lighter, and if you've got the proper um, DIN socket, DIN plug, you can turn that in and you can actually lock it. It's got a turn to lock facility. I haven't got one of those unfortunately. It has a light on the back. If I turn it round. It's got quite a bright light on the back. You press it again and it dims slightly. You press it again and apparently that's flashing SOS so I hope there's no helicopters watching. Press it again it switches it off. Also on the back is the input socket. So what can it charge? Well, we've used it for charging our wireless microphones, the microphones that I'm wearing at the moment. And there it is, charging my Rode Wireless Go microphone. So because it's got four USBs there, that's quite handy because I've got three of these. So I've got one receiver and two transmitters. So it takes up three of the sockets there and I can still power a laptop as well and something else. And I can plonk my phone on the top to charge it wirelessly. So all good. And the great thing about that is I can use the while my laptop sitting outside, perhaps enjoying some sunshine, which we haven't got very much of at the moment, unfortunately. It can operate as an emergency backup if the, your leisure battery on your vehicle goes flat. Now I did a little test earlier and let me show you that.
215 watts. Yeah, so power wise, we're drawing 1.4 amps, 1.3, something like that. It's not a huge amount, but I've got I've got the heating off. I think if I was to put the heating on, that would probably stop it. I just won't try that at the moment. Fridge is running on uh, an electric. So I suppose if you put some lights on. One point six amps, not not a huge amount. But anything else I think you're going to you're probably gonna trip that. I think if I put the heating on, let's go for it. <laughs> let's put the heating on one bar. Turn it up a bit. I have to turn it right up. And power. Yeah, it's whacked, whacked up to 13 amps and it's just killed it. Yeah, power's just gone off. So it comes up with an error code. Yeah, there it goes. So what can't it charge? Well, it won't charge our coffee maker, unfortunately, our Tassimo because that goes up to 1200 watts so it's well beyond the capacity of a 300 watt socket it won't run our toaster because that's 700 watts and it won't run a hairdryer also 700 watts so there is a limitation to the sort of things you can charge but phones microphones uh, small electronic devices it can charge that it could charge my gopro which is, uh, which is always handy and it can charge the camera that you're watching this on as well so any drawbacks with this uh, this unit? Well, I think the biggest drawback, as you probably heard me say, is it's only 300 watts of inverter supply there. I found also that the wireless charging doesn't work if the phone has got down below about 15%. Now I'm told that's an issue with the phone and not the wireless charging. It just doesn't switch the wireless charging on on the phone. So it is a bit of a drawback if your phone's gone completely flat. You can't just plonk it on there and hope it's a charge because it just won't charge it. You have to resort to plugging it into one of the USB sockets. I also want to show you the fan. I think when you're charging it, I think this is a bit too noisy. So here's the mains charger. It's quite a big uh, chunky thing. And you plug that into the input socket at the back. I think you can hear that that's a fan I mean it's not incredibly noisy but if you're charging it overnight and bear in mind that this takes around about five hours to charge fully that's a little bit noisy so I haven't been charging it at night been charging it during the day mainly using the the mains power I have to confess because we've not had a great deal of sunshine that we could actually use to charge it I did do a test when we were at home using the solar panel and I found that was actually very effective. The Power Oak solar panel is 120 watts, uh, apparently it's weatherproof and you can use that to charge this. So what did I like about the Power Oak AC50S, <laughs> apart from the noisy fan, is it's, it's quite lightweight, it's quite portable, it fits nicely in lockers, some of the big 1000 watt units are a bit cumbersome to say the least and uh, 
this this fits nicely in a locker. I actually found that I could fit it in the shoe locker just by the door, so that's quite a nice place to put it, if you've got somewhere else to put your shoes, of course. I like the portability, I like the little handles on here, that's quite nice, and having the handles on it like that and folding them away, it does save a bit of space. Uh, some units have the handle built in on the top, and that does mean that you're forever um, trying to find somewhere to, to put it because they stick up a little bit. So having them fold away is a really handy thing to have. I've also found that it's actually very useful for charging up the camera you're using to film a product review. I just found the battery was about to run out <laughs> on the Sony. So I'm actually using it to charge the camera you're watching this with. So conclusions. This is the fourth power bank that we've tested and whenever you test these power banks it's always a balance between weight and portability and usability. This is at the lower end of the power uh, capability but it's also at the higher end of the portability and unless I'm going off grid an awful lot this would be my power bank of choice. Uh, it's got enough features on here to make it useful for charging those gadgets that we all carry around with us. Uh, but it doesn't take up a huge amount of room or add a great deal of weight to your vehicle. Speaking of weight, I'm not sure how long I can hold 6.2 kilograms up like that, but, uh, but that's a good test of it. Now if I were off grid, I'd go for the larger power bank. If I spent a lot of time off grid, I'd go for the power bank EB1000 and I'd put up, put up with the size of it. But for us, something like this is really useful uh, for charging phones, microphones and the laptop when we're working outside. So I do recommend this. I think it is a good product. It feels well made uh, with the little drawbacks that I mentioned. So I hope you found this interesting, and if you did give us a thumbs up, I'm going to put this down now because this is quite heavy after a while. I'll see you soon, thanks for watching, catch you in the next one, bye then.